Hello guys, in this video I'll show you how we can make a multiplayer roulette game using React. Usually when speaking about games you'll be using some kind of engine like Godot, Unity, Unreal or whichever it might be, but usually React should not be one of your choices, even if it's a board game. But that's exactly why I wanted to do it. When making a roulette game there are a couple of main parts that it needs to have. A board, wheel and chips. I have seen roulettes that do not have the wheel, but this just removes the fun out of the roulette for the player, so I definitely wanted to have that. Next, I found some assets for those components and started working on the code. Let's start by looking at the wheel. The basics of it should be that it needs to spin and then the number that it stops on should be the winning number. Here's the part that we need to consider, because we are making a multiplayer game, that means the winning number should be the same for all players. This is why we need to have the number generated on the server. Then the server needs to tell all the players what that winning number is. And then we need to animate the wheel in such a way that it stops at the exact number we tell it to stop to. To do that let's look at our wheel. It contains 37 numbers in total. It's very important to have an accurate asset so that our zero is always at the top when our roulette is rotated at 0 degrees. Now let's consider for a moment that our winning number will always be at 0 degrees. If we want our winning number to be 15, we need to know how much we have to rotate the wheel so the winning number is at our 0 degree. To be accurate, let's find out how much a single number rotation is. We can do it when we divide 360 by 37 and this is roughly around 10 degrees per number. Then let's make an array that will hold all the numbers in the correct order that are presented on our wheel. This will help us with our calculations. Now every time we want to calculate the degrees of the wheel, we're going to be using the index from our array. Because the index starts at 0, this actually works perfectly for us. When we get the index from our winning number and multiply it by the single rotation value, we'll get our degrees. So for our 0, we'll return 0 degrees and for the 15, we'll return around 20. Something to keep in mind is that the degrees are rotating clockwise, so if we actually change the degrees we just calculated, it will give us the wrong number. And we have two solutions for this. We either calculate how much we should spin based on one full rotation, which is 360 degrees minus the winning degrees, or we can rotate the roulette counterclockwise by just adding a minus in front of the winning number's degrees. In our case we're going to be spinning counterclockwise because I want to have the ball and the wheel spinning in separate directions. Because it just looks better like that. Let's see how we can do that in practice. The assets that I'm using are split into different sections, so it will be easier to spin only the parts that we need. We'll make a separate wheel component and place the assets in a suiting way for us. To make the animations I'm going to be using a library which is called AnimeJS. For the wheel animation we'll use the anime function then set the target, which is what we want to animate. Then we set the rotation, which will be how much we want to rotate the wheel. As we know, one full rotation is 360 degrees, but in our case that won't be enough. Luckily, we're not limited to that. So for example, if we rotate it 720 degrees, which is twice as much, we will rotate the wheel twice, which is exactly what we need. So this means we don't have any restrictions on how much degrees we can put there. But to make things even more interesting, let's make it so the end rotation is completely random. Then we add a duration in milliseconds for the whole animation and some easing. If we spin the wheel right now, we can see that it's working. But currently, every time we do, the wheel starts spinning from the zero at the top, which we don't want. So let's make it start every time from where it actually ended. Every time the spin completes, we save the number and then we calculate what is the rotation of that number on the wheel and set the value every time before the actual animation starts. We also set the initial value as 0, so every time the first spin will be at 0 degrees. Now let's add the bow as well and animate it. In our game we're not going to have colliders for the bow and no physics, but we're still going to make our animation look good. First let's set up two diffs. The outer one we're going to be using for rotation and Y position, and the inner one for the bow initial position. Then let's create an anime function for the ball, in which we're going to animate our Y position at different points in time and also rotate the ball. For the duration, we set the same as our will, but it's not mandatory to do it like that. You can set whatever you want and whatever suits your case the best. 
We are also setting the end position of the ball, so we need to do some calculation so it actually stops at the correct number we wanted to. The first thing we need is our wheel rotation, which we got earlier, and because we are spinning the wheel counterclockwise, that's why we have a minus in front of it. Based on that, we can calculate the position of our zero at the end of the animation, which is going to be a pointer for us to find our actual winning number location. And of course, to make things even more interesting, we add to the calculation some randomization as well. Now, if we test it, we can see that we have successfully created our wheel rotation and the ball rotation. Next, we can move to the board. I have a single asset for it, which makes it so easy if you want to change something on the design in the future. It's just important to have an accurate placement of the different sections on it. To start, we can use a simple table, so every cell will be a different part of the table. For every cell, we'll be having a type and a value. If it is a split cell, we're going to be using split value. And here it comes the boring part. Every cell needs to have a component that we'll be calling a chip component. So the next part we can do manually or do it partially automatic by making our calculations. But after we have that part ready, our board is actually very close to being functional. We just need to add chips to it. So before we continue with the chip component, let's add them. When we have our chip assets, we just add them to the board. We also make it so if we select a chip, we save it in our state. So we know which chip is selected when we click on a cell to place that chip. Now let's go to the chip component, which will contain the functionality for our chip placement. To make things more interactive, let's make it so every time we place a chip, we calculate the cell value and based on that we output what chip should be displayed. So for example, if we add two chips with the value of 10, they will be converted to one chip with value of 20, and so on. Also, we don't want to place everything on top of each other, so we're going to make it so every time we are placing a chip, it's going to be on a random spot in that cell. To remember what chips we're placing on the board, we're again going to be using our state. And then, with that state, we're placing them on the board. But this also causes an issue, where every time we click on a cell, it will re-render all the chips, which is also not performant for us, and we want to fix that. To do it, let's go to our chip component, and instead of exporting it normally, we're going to be adding react.memo. So, every time we export, our chip state is actually being saved. So everything in that cell, if there is no change to it, it will not be re-rendered. Now that we are ready with the board, let's get on with the multiplayer part. Initially, I really wanted to use boardgame.io for the multiplayer. It provides a lot of ready-to-go features that just look so nice to use and also has a client debugging. But unfortunately, I needed something way more simpler than that. So I stopped at Socket.io, because our game is going to be always working on the server, this means after the round is over, then the next begins and so on, so this is just an endless loop. This means we need some kind of timer to order those stages of the game. So I found one called Easy Timer, which was exactly what I needed. In total, from placing the bets to showing the winning numbers, it would take exactly 60 seconds. So, in our server, we are making a listener, which will always tell us what part of the minute we are on. So if we are at the first second of the minute, that means we are going to tell the player that it's time to place their bets. We do it by setting some data for the current stage of the game in our game object and sending it to the players. We are doing the same thing for no more bets and showing the winners. And in the client, every time we receive this data, we are going to change our state accordingly. Knowing this, we can create a progress bar for the players so they know actually how much time is left and what stage the game is on. We are going to use anime function again, which will change the progress bar based on the max duration and the current duration of that round. Next, let's make a button to place our bets that will send all the bets that are on the table to the server. When we receive it on the server, we save the bets placed by all players locally. After the bets are closed, we calculate all the placed bets. From all the information that we have, let's create a list that will output all the winners and a history of all the previously winning numbers. Finally, let's set up our server and run the whole game. Here we have two players, so let's make some bets and just enjoy the game. By the way guys, everything will be in the description. 
the full project and anything connected to that video. Also, even though we have created our game, like any projects, there is always room for improvement. And at the top of my head, there are a couple of points that we need to cover in the future. For example, the end rotation of the wheel is generated randomly on the client side, which makes it so that our clients see the wheel rotated at a different place. So if we place it on the server side, we can have both clients with the same rotation on the roulette, which is not that important, but it just might be nice to have. Improving the chip placement, because currently every time you have to click a cell to place chips, but in the future we can make it so you have to just drag your mouse and then the chips can be placed by themselves. When the ball stops at the winning number, instead of just checking the wheel, we can also display it separately, so we have this winning number on another pop-up or something like that. Highlighting the different areas where the mouse is on when you're placing bets is also something that we can add to the roulette. And for the multiplayer part as well, we can do different lobbies, because currently we're just playing on one lobby and, you know, having just multiple places that players can join is always nice to have. And not only that, but we can add different chat systems as well, so players can communicate. And currently we don't have a coin system, but again, that's something for the future that we can add to our game. These were only some ideas, but you can imagine that like any project, we can improve a lot on it. But for now, we've created a very nice working game. So I hope you liked it. And if you have any suggestions for any kind of projects, I'm open to them, it doesn't matter what language it is or what kind of projects, I would just like to hear you out. And also, if you've liked this kind of style of tutorials, I'll just keep doing them. And I would really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button, but even if you don't, thank you for watching and see you next time.